All right, so hear me out. Maybe your music career is supposed to just be a hobby. What's up guys, Brandon here from KDMR Music, the channel making you a more successful musician through videos about music marketing, music business in general, and strategy tips just like this one. Now, if you're new here, consider subscribing. But today I wanted to talk to you guys about just how you know if music is supposed to be your career or just something that you do for fun. Uh, so a couple months ago, I did a video about what things, what actions that different artists are going to take in order to be successful and break out in 2023. And in the comments of that video, someone said, hey, music should be a hobby, not a career. And um, I honestly wasn't mad at that statement. Uh, not to say that everyone should just be a hobbyist and there shouldn't be any like professional musicians out there. But I know a lot of the people who aspire to be like the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop, the big time musicians, they also find themselves in a lot of like heartache and just mental health issues and things like that because they're not realistic about what that goal might mean for their lives. And so I wanted to make a video about how you know whether or not you should be pursuing music as a career or just making music as a hobby or just something like a passion project. And I think the best way to do that will be through a story that's not necessarily related to music, right? So in 2017, uh, actually not too far from the time I actually started this channel up, but in 2017, I got laid off from my nine to five job. I was in sales and it wasn't working out. And so they let me go. And, um, in that time period, I had like a sick relative. So it just made sense for me not to be chained to a nine to five job. And so I had this camera, same camera I'm talking to you on. And I had developed a passion for photography at that time. And I was like, you know what? Instead of me going out and looking for a nine to five to replace this one, what if I just, you know, give myself some time and spin up this photography as a business. Uh, that way I can set my own schedule, set my own hours, potentially make more than I was making at my day job. And then I'll still have, you know, time to spend with family and stuff like that. And so I started up the business. I built a website, uh, started accepting clients and online bookings and all that. And we were kind of off to the races and it started off pretty cool. But then I recognized pretty quickly that there were a few different pitfalls. First, the revenue was super inconsistent. I'd have some weeks where I made thousands of dollars and I could cover all of my bills for the month in like three days work. And then I had some where I was just twiddling my thumbs, like hoping I'd get a client, hoping something would happen. Uh, so I wasn't like bored out of my mind sitting at home and to make sure that I could pay my bills. Uh, so that was crazy. The inconsistent revenue sucked. Uh, another thing that sucked was it wasn't creatively fulfilling. Like when I was getting clients, they would get, I was getting those clients because one of their friends told them about it. It was a lot of word of mouth or they saw my photos online somewhere. And so what would happen was I would get booked, which was great, but they all wanted the same things. They wanted what they saw me do before. And so it quickly went from being something that was artistic and me being creative and doing something new to me doing the same old thing, getting really mundane and really routine. So that was a second pitfall. It wasn't creatively fulfilling all the time. And then the last and probably the biggest pitfall that I did not see coming, there was so much admin work and I hated the admin work, because being a photographer is not as simple as just going out, getting in your car, taking photos and then receiving a check. No, there's the website building. There is the Facebook ads or the Craigslist posts that you got to do to get new clients. Uh, there's handing out business cards. There's consulting with people, taking Zoom calls and saying, hey, what kind of setting are you looking for? Here, what's your vision? Here are some photos I've done that fit that aesthetic. And here are some ideas I have that I saw from other photo shoots. Let's see if we can get this together. Um, and then 
there's the actual shooting where they want a bunch of different locations and it might not be the most convenient. Uh, <laughs> there's the waiting period when you've taken the photos, but now you've got to take those 300 photos that you took and knock them down into like a 25 photo session, right? And so for every hour of photography that you're doing, there's two to three hours of editing work that you're doing. And suddenly it's just not fun. In fact, I found myself dreading it. The very thing that I really loved doing when it was just me and my camera I hated when I tried to add money into the equation. And often by the time I finished doing the work that was required, often by the time I delivered the photos to the clients, I didn't feel like it was worth the money. Even when it was like a significant amount of money, like I did weddings and made like my entire month's rent in a weekend. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. But by the time I delivered those wedding photos after revision, after revision and Oh, do you have one of these and that? Or people's eyes are closed and all that. I was just like, oh my gosh, this sucks. And so I eventually closed that business. And yeah, I still take photos, but not for clients. In fact, last time I took photos was for my sister. Because I only do stuff for family or like really close friends at this point. Uh, so all that to say that photography as a hobby has been great. It's been a great creative outlet. But photography as a business just was not for me. Meanwhile, I do have friends that I met through the hobby and through the business who are still thriving and doing great work and making great money. I just realized that what is easy for them, what is worth it to them, was not worth it to me. And I think there's a real parallel there with, you know, music as another creative outlet that can potentially turn into a business. A lot of the people who are watching this, if you're watching this video, you're aspiring to be a musician for a living, a professional musician. You're going to end up in the uh, what Ari Herstan calls the uh, middle class of musician, meaning you're probably not going to be making like multiple six figures a year. You'll likely be making enough to keep up your lifestyle and not have to have a day job eventually. But in order for you to achieve that lifestyle, there's going to be quite a few things that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to work late nights because you got to play rinky dink clubs and stuff, or you got to do regional dates where you're in a van and it's you and maybe two or three people and you're driving to every stop on the tour uh, until you reach a certain level of success. Uh, you're going to have to go long nights without seeing your family, sometimes weeks or even months at a time. Uh, you got to join in the content game because now it's not enough to just be a musician and pop out every two to three months. No, you got to be on Instagram Reels and TikTok and Facebook and all the social medias so that people know you exist or so that they care whenever your newest product comes out. You might even have to be a full time merch distributor. You've got to be pressing up T-shirts, mailing packages out uh, on a regular basis. There are so many little miniature jobs that go along with being a sort of working class or middle class musician uh, that a lot of the big wigs don't really have to think about because they've got teams that handle those things for them. And unfortunately, it's a lot of musicians that just don't think about those things. Like in order to be successful, in order to make this amount of money and make the music that I love making without compromising whatever my values are or whatever my sound is. Um, I got to put together a huge, from like all these different categories, I got to put together a, a bunch of different aspects to make myself into the perfect artist that is at least semi-viable commercially, and I'm able to make a living doing what I love. Um, I think a lot of musicians would be well-served to just have music as a hobby. And so to answer the question of whether or not you should be a professional musician, let, let's just talk about why you're doing it. Uh, I was recently talking with an artist friend of mine. I was asking her some of the same questions that I'm about to ask you. One, why do you make music? Uh, chances are, if you make music of any type for any amount of time, it's because you love making music. And that's good because that love, that passion is what's going to drive some of the most successful artists 
uh, through those other ta- activities and tasks that aren't music related at all, right? Your accounting, doing your taxes, printing out merch and putting it in the mail, all those different things that have nothing to do with tuning your guitar or practicing or anything like that. It's that love and that passion for music that's going to get you through those sort of mundane tasks. So it's good that you love music, right? But from your love of music, what is it that you need? Are you making music just because you want to feel fulfilled and say that you did it? Because that's one reason. Sometimes we make art just so that we have the satisfaction of knowing that we could make art if we wanted to. There are others of us that take it a step further and want to use our art to relate to people, right? So you make your song and you go and you stand on the street corner and you sing your song or you press up a CD or you make uh, your song available on iTunes or Spotify. And what you're looking for is the reaction of an audience to say, this is good or this is bad. I can relate to this or I can't relate to this. I love this or I hate this. So that's another reason. You want to do it for the adoration of an audience. And that's cool too. But then there's another subset of you who wants to make music because you just can't see yourself doing anything else. Like, You tried being an accountant. (laughs) You tried working at Starbucks. You tried just working in a music store. And, you know, that scratched the itch a little bit. But what you really want to do is be on stage or be in the studio all the time. And you don't want to do anything else. And you want to be able to make as much money as possible while you're doing it. And when it's all said and done, you want your name up there with the greats. You want to be Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Drake, Jay-Z, whomever. And for those people, it's going to take an immense amount of work to get there. I was just watching uh, a show called The Idea Generation, uh, and it's a show produced by the guy who used to be the editor-in-chief at Complex. And so The Idea Generation did a feature on Rhapsody, who's an artist whose uh, rise I got a chance to watch from pretty close up because I was an intern at her record label during the time where she got her feature on Kendrick Lamar's uh, second album and sort of reached new levels in her career. But before Rhapsody had her big break on the Kendrick album, she had literally been doing stuff underground for like 10 years. Like she went from rapping in cyphers on a college campus to kind of being taken in by Ninth Wonder, uh, the the music producer, and going through like a, a boot camp of sorts, just making mixtape after mixtape and track after track, and then doing feature after feature. And then eventually she ends up on Kendrick Lamar's album as the only feature on To Pimp a Butterfly. People look at her differently and her career reaches a different level. She even ends up getting signed to Rock Nation after that, which is really cool. But a lot of musicians, a lot of you guys watching this, you don't want to work for 10 years to get to a point where some people would argue Rhapsody's not even an A-list star. She's B or C-list at best, depending on whether or not she's in an album cycle, right? A lot of you guys aren't willing to do the work that it takes to be as successful as a Beyonce. And that's okay. It's totally okay to not work yourself to the bone looking for a result because I don't necessarily need to have millions of dollars as long as my bills are paid. I'm cool. And I think most of you feel the same way. But maybe you don't even want to struggle to make the seven or six figures, you know, to have a sort of modest lifestyle in America. Maybe you just want to sit on a street corner and strum your guitar. If that's you, I don't know. Maybe think long and hard about what you want and why you want it. Because ultimately, I can't answer these questions for you, but I can tell you that if you want a music career, it's not going to come easily. It's not something that's going to happen by accident. It's going to be the result of a ton of hard work. And at some point, you got to decide if your love of music can get you through 
a dislike of business practices and into a successful career? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you in another video real soon. Peace.